Hi, I'm Julie Thompson. Welcome to the Pembroke Select Board Candidate Interview. I want to take a moment to thank our candidate for participating in this interview and collaborating with PAC-TV to bring this informational programming to residents and voters this election season. Let me explain the format. Today, Karen Rayner will be interviewed. Karen will have two minutes to introduce herself, speak about her background, qualifications, and why she's running for office. She will then be asked a series of questions, which will include a back-and-forth exchange between her and myself, and this exchange should go no longer than four minutes. She will then have a two-minute closing statement. The responses and closing statements, she will see a timer on her screen so she knows where she is. And um, we're going to get right into your opening statement. Karen, you're going to have two minutes. Go right ahead. Hi, I'm Karen Rayner, and as Julie said, I'm running for one of two seats on the select board up for election in June. I have 25 years of experience in managing operations, infrastructure, and technology strategies to drive operational and fiscal sustainability in the corporate nonprofit sectors. I most recently oversaw and provided strategic direction for the operations and administrative departments of New England Conservatory in Boston. If elected, I will bring the experience I have from facilities and operations management, change management and budget management to add to the experience of colleagues on the board, and our town manager as he and his team work to provide a better budgeting process and infrastructure planning process for the town. Pembroke will need to emerge from the remaining months of the global pandemic with a plan in place for getting back to a steady state while identifying areas for future growth and development. We must also recognize the financial and mental health impacts this pandemic has had on many of our residents, as well as how our small businesses have been affected, and we must plan accordingly. I joined my husband on the South Shore 20 years ago, relocating from Chicago. My husband grew up in the area and needed little convincing to get me to move east. We first lived in Quincy, then Abington, and three years ago, a house on my brother-in-law street in Pembroke came on the market, and being very familiar with the town through our family visits, we made the move. We knew the schools were good, and we wanted to live closer to our family. We have loved living here. Our children are in the public schools, one at the high school, the other at North Pembroke. My husband is involved in the town's youth sports, and I have gotten involved in the Recycling Center, the PTO, Pembroke for Racial Justice, where we are working closely with the Pembroke Police Department, and our other community groups, in addition to supporting local charities. We also love the many trails and conservation areas, and we feel very lucky to have this luxury in Pembroke. I've gotten to know many of our small business owners, town leadership, and I've spent time with our chief of police and fire chief. I believe that strong relationships built on mutual respect are the cornerstone to functional relationships at all levels, and I would bring that mindset to the board. Thank you. Okay, question number one. Given what we have experienced in the past year, what are the most valuable lessons learned and how can they be utilized in managing the town moving forward? One of the things I think our town has learned, especially with the COVID pandemic is uh, to plan for the unexpected. I think that the town tried to do everything in its power from Pima and to our board of health to be able to be ready for our residents in town for the pandemic. But they had to pivot time and time again, whether it was vaccines or other social services. Um, I saw people in town pivot over and over, and I think that's something we always need to be ready for. I think that the other thing that is very difficult is that um, we had some uh, capital improvement planning and fiscal planning that was put in place. Of course, we have our brand new town manager who put together a significant amount of planning for his first year in office. And then with the pandemic, a lot of that has been put on the back burner. Um, as much as we can do things in conjunction with something as huge as a global pandemic, I think we're, we're starting a little bit behind with where we need to be. And so the more we can run things parallel in the future, I think we need to strive to do that. How do you think we can catch up with some of the things that we lost over that year? I mean, how do, how do we, how do we re, regroup and, and charge forward to where we, where we were two years ago, for example? It's a good question. I, I think it's going to take everyone working together and, and growing in the same direction. I think that there are a lot of towns around us that have good uh, boilerplates and blueprints for what we did, um, you know, what they were doing three or four years ago that, that we're able to look at and we're able to see what was successful for them and, and what didn't work for them so that we can avoid some of those similar missteps. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of work that's gonna need to be done in the coming year to get us back to steady state. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Let's go to question two. In your opinion, what aspects of our town government need fixing the most and the least? 
In my opinion, I, I do think that the recent vote, for example, on the town moderator, uh, moving from a, a one-year position uh, to a two-year position that's going to be on the, on the town um, at the town meeting, I think that's those are the kind of things that we need to be doing. We need to be looking at what we do on a regular basis that is status quo that we've always done, and we need to make sure that we're always looking for improvements. Um, the other thing that I think um, would be very helpful going forward, we don't have the type of infrastructure for to support the town growth. We don't have um, ma regular maintenance crews. We don't have IT help. We don't have any human resources department for town hall services, and we have a growing staff you wouldn't have a business without those services so I think we need to look at that structure going forward and are you surprised that we don't have that structure in place now and are you can you comment on how well the town has done without those actual structures in place yeah, I mean, you hear time and time again, whether you're watching meetings or participating in meetings, catching the live stream, you know, our, our town continuously does more with less. We hear it over and over again. We punch above our weight over and over. Um, there's a little bit of surprise. There are collaboratives that we could join. There are ways that we can do this where it won't um, be as expensive as if we had our own departments uh, supporting these services. We outsource a lot. And so we could probably look at other towns that outsource and see what kind of um, collaboration we can do to, in order to save um, money and not overburden the taxpayers. But with how many staff we have, I do think it's time for us to look at, at how we can support our, our town hall better. And, and finally, in the same vein, what do you think Pembroke does really well as managing themselves? I think that uh, as a town, the community aspect of our town is amazing. From the day that we walked in, um, we have felt welcomed. We have felt uh, doors open for us. Um, and I think that's top down. I think our our are the community that you find at Town Hall. Um, people are willing to help other people. The, what we saw during the pandemic, um, from donations to the food pantry to neighbors helping neighbors, um, I think that the timing was great that we were able to all come together uh, during this past year so that we could help each other out. And, and I think that's, that comes from the way that people are in our Town Hall. Okay, thank you, that's great. And let's go on to the uh, third question. There are pros and cons to having those with long tenure sitting on an elected board versus those who may be newly elected to the position. What is your view, pro and con, on turnover with a board? There is definitely some concern. You need that longevity. You need people who know what they're doing. There is definitely a learning curve when you're coming into a position like this. On the other hand, I think sometimes it's hard when you're so close to a process or to uh, a system. It's very hard sometimes to look for efficiencies and to look for a new way to do it. So I think having a mixture actually of people who were born and raised in Pembroke and put down roots and, and plan on staying, people who have families that date back to the beginning of, of the founding of the town, I think that their voices are incredible incredibly important, but I also think new voices um, are also important because you bring a very different perspective and you have different ideas. It's, it's definitely a balance. It's a little bit of a yin and yang. Okay, uh, agreed. And what about um, communication? How, how important do you think that uh, the ability to communicate either between themselves on the board or outward to all the residents and all the other mm -hmm. departments they have to um, deal with, it, uh, speak to that communication? Sure. Communication and relationships, I think, are key in positions like this. We've got so many volunteers, people that give up their times there in the evening and on the weekends to be able to provide public service to our town. Um, that's that's what keeps our town running along with our phenomenal uh, teams and town halls. So I think communication and, and relationship building is absolutely vital in order to have a well-functioning town government. I also think that accessibility and transparency are really important. We need to be honest with the town's folks of the residents and taxpayers of Pembroke. They need to know where we are fiscally. They need to know what our options are for planning for the future. Um, that's something that I absolutely would be committed to if I'm lucky enough to be elected. Okay, thank you. Now I have the gotcha question. Um, you, it's, I call it my 20-second rapid response question. Okay, so just off the top of your head, I want you to answer this as best you can. And you're going to have 20 seconds to answer. 
If you were given $3 million to spend in any way and for any part of the town, how would you spend it? I would, I would have a capital investment plan and I would look at our infrastructure. Uh, we have aging infrastructure. We have a town hall that needs a complete renovation and refresh. Our town center also needs some significant work done. Uh, the plans for the community center, uh, you know, it's a beautiful building and would provide services from, you know, newborns to our seniors. And, and without question, I, our $3 million would go towards uh, infrastructure. Okay, great, thank you. And now we are ready for your closing remarks. And you are going to have two minutes to do those, so go right ahead. Thank you again for having me, Julie. And thank you to everyone who's watching from home. Pembroke is at a transition point. Coming out of the pandemic, our focus should be on the creation of a master plan and a capital investment plan so we can lay out a vision and goals for our future and also better anticipate how to mitigate or entirely reconstruct our aging town buildings. With our most recent building project, our public library being more than 20 years old, there are infrastructure needs, normal wear and tear that we must have a plan for in order to ensure the building can continue to service the town well into the future. A solid capital investment and maintenance plan also enables a smoother budget process from year to year so taxpayers can better understand and anticipate the overarching needs of the town's infrastructure. From the upcoming vote on the community center to the needs of our public safety services and Department of Public Works, we cannot continue to leave renovations and rebuilding to the future. We need creative solutions that won't overburden our taxpayers. I love getting to live in Pembroke and I am deeply invested in the town's growth and future success. We need to ensure we're planning for the future and not just maintaining the status quo. Pembroke has incredible promise to thrive as we come out of the pandemic, so long as we have the proper planning in place. If you're looking for a candidate who will work hard for the future of Pembroke, I hope to have your vote for the select board. Please make your plan now to vote on or before June 26th. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you for participating in this interview. We wish you the best of luck throughout your campaign and in the election. And for our viewers, thank you for joining us. If you're interested in watching replays of this interview, please visit our website, pactv.org slash elections, for replay times and online viewing options, including PACTV's on-demand and streaming service, PACTV Prime. And please make your choices heard by voting in the election on Saturday, June 26th. Thank you, and good day.